So um, this uh, assignment is let's look at let's look at uh, coastal populations. Let's look at like you know people near the coast, inland. So you're going to generate two figures. The first one I want you to find your own data. Okay. So if everybody's looking up here, I'm going to click this link, which is going to take me to um, the National Ocean Economics Program. Oh, sorry. Let me let me go back. So so the prompt here is. Um, uh, I want you to play with the query tool and figure out how to pull data from this online database. Okay, so that's the goal. So you're going to pull data from the online database. And um, I want you to look at inland and coastal. It could be coastal watershed. It, it doesn't really matter. But I want you to just play around and figure out how to download data. The way data will come out of this uh, tool, as with most of these online things is a com CSV, a comma-separated comma variable file. And that's, you know, as, as cheap and, and, and lightweight as we can make the data. You can then import that CSV into Excel, into Google Sheets, into, um, into uh, Plotly or whatever your favorite uh, tool of choice is, right? Um, my suggestion is rather than import it directly into, say, Plotly, I would first probably open it in Excel or whatever and make sure what's coming out is what I thought was coming out, right? So, so it's good. Um, one thing to just keep in mind, in general, when we're importing things, okay, where we have a, a, a column that has a variable name on the top, and then some, num some numbers. And generally speaking, this uh, second, this is, this is one uh, sample, right? So this is, say, uh, one year's worth of data or one person's you know, measurements or whatever. And this is their height, weight, you know, something, something like that, right? That, that, that's the default. There are other formats that can come in, but most of the time, that's what we're talking about. Um, and so when we go to import anything into uh, a stats program into a graphing program. This is what we're, def by default, if we're going to import something, this is what we're thinking we're going to be pulling in. Sometimes when we export files from an online query tool, it actually might come out with something like this. Where there's a title and there's something about the variables and all this kind of stuff, right? That is really helpful for you to archive, for you to save and go, oh yes, this came from the National Oce you know, Ocean Economics Program and okay, this and then it was created in 2010 or you know, whatever, that's all great. But that will cause us problems oftentimes when we go to import stuff. So again, step is gonna be, we're gonna query, ask, you know, find, out, find some data, download that data, open that data in Excel or Google Sheets check it out. I again, I would archive that. I would save that as a copy. So if I screw up, I always can go back to my master file. And then, but then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select these guys and I'm going to, um, or whatever the, he the extra header is, whatever it is, and I'm going to delete that stuff. So that what I'm left with is a clean file to import. Um, one, that'll ensure we don't get screwed up. But two, if we accidentally imported something like this, with a with a a letter in there or or a non numeric or a period uh, symbol, oftentimes that'll corrupt the data file, and and the program will consider row B all text based responses. So it will not understand that three that four is bigger than three. It will not understand that six is bigger than three. It's just going to consider them all as if they're like Q and R and T and G and H and whatever, right? So, so to avoid all that, so to avoid it thinking that, we're gonna make sure that our data is clean and the variables are just numeric. Uh, well, I should say, you, you might have, maybe you're doing hair color or something, and so maybe the, the variables are text-based. But in most cases, we're gonna have numeric, we're gonna have quantitative measurements of things. So we wanna double check that. Does that make sense? So query. Check the data, data's good, then you can go ahead and import and do stuff. So for this, this exercise is very simple, but as we go forward in the semester, remember that, because forgetting that will get you frustrated and like, it's not working, I don't know why it's not graphing, because the programs don't necessarily tell you that it thinks something is a, is a text. 
And so it might just give you fewer choices and you'll be spending an hour. I can't make it. Why is it not making? It's not, the program's broken. It's not letting me do a scatter plot. It's because it can't find something to do the scatter plot on. Molly. Mm -hmm. No, so, so if, you, if, you, um, if, I, if I do this, if I select this and I, cut, and I manually, so, oh, sorry, so the question was, is it okay? So Molly's question is, hey, if I have something like this and I import it, is that okay? Yes, by default, it, it'll recognize the first uh, row as the, the header names. Um, so generally, if it is import, you should be fine. But what? But be careful of this. So if I if I try to manually do it, I go, oh my god, it's only like, you know, 15 cells. I don't need to take the time to import it. If I go like this, if I copy this whole thing, and then go here and click this, then I will be screwed, right? So then it's going to paste the title in and think it's a variable. So if I wanted to do that, what I would do instead is, I would I would not copy my title row and then if I click here then I'm all good then if I click here I'm all good and then I can just go here and manually type stuff in if I import it though it'll take care of that step for me cool okay so um, with that okay so, so that, that's the first one so the first one is is to do a query and the point here is just spend a few minutes and play around and so all I'm asking you to do is to um, have your X be years, and then your Y be something else, and I don't care what it is. You guys can do whatever you find interesting. Number of houses, number of people, whatever, okay? And so this, is, this first one is just to make sure you guys can download data and make a, a figure. So I don't, I don't really particularly care what is most of interest to you. Um, but I do want something to span years. I do want something to look at change over time. So the X variable will be time. For this one, for part two, once you do that, this next one, I've, I've uh, curated the data for you, okay? And so for that one, if you click here, and when you open up that file that I've created, you'll find it's an Excel file. And if you click on, and, and have a look here. This one is a little more complicated. It's got three tabs, okay? The first tab is just, um, tells you what, where it all came from, all the background. If you want to know where I got this from and who compiled it and everything, that's the first one. Then, then this guy is, is the, the data, that, the raw data that comes out of, the, of the, the State Department that made this data, right? Uh, and then I've been the cities for you. So then I've, I've um, made it easier for you guys. So I've done all the cleaning for it. So this would be an example of something maybe in a future lab, I would have you guys do this step, right? This select city step, right? It's, it, here's the raw data, which is great, but this might be a little bit hard to work with. Cool, everybody with me on this? So um, always good whenever you download this data from somewhere, open it again in Excel or Google Sheets and just spend a minute or two, just check it out. Hey, what is this? Is this what I thought it was? Oh my God, I downloaded the wrong thing. Or, oh my God, this thing only goes back five years and I needed it to go back 20 years, right? So just qualitatively look at it, make sure it makes sense to you. The variables should all be labeled. If there's some variable you don't know what it is, it should be somewhere in that sheet or on the site where you downloaded the, originally downloaded the data. And then you're probably gonna have to do some level of, of cleaning or, or you know, manipulate the data so it's in a nice uh, you know, form where we have you know, year and, and all this and that. In this case, these, these are abbreviations for different cities. San Francisco, Arcata, Los Angeles, San Diego, Sacramento, Bakersfield, Fresno, and Merced, okay? And so just to finish this up, uh, and so what you're doing on, so what you're doing here is, hold on you guys, one last thing. Okay, so, so your first one is you're just making some uh, data, some data over time with the data you're gonna download of your own choosing. And then the next one is you're going to make a graph to compare the populations of these of inland versus uh, coastal cities over time. So I want to see how their populations have changed over time. Okay. The first thing is you're going to click on this link yeah. and you're going to go query the data, download the data, and you yourself are going to make some vi visualization of some aspect of 
people at the coast over time. So I don't care what it is. Could be number of people, could be housing. It's, it's like, you know, your guy's choice. And the second one is I specifically want you to compare population growth inland versus uh, in, uh, at a coastal site, a couple coastal sites. Make sense?